Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Faith is for Autism South Jersey Field of Dreams celebration dinner. Before we begin, I have to thank three of the most amazing, most talented people I could have ever worked with putting tonight's program together. Without Joey M putting the majority of your entertainment together with a few how, few small suggestions from me, without Zach helping me put, put half the prizes of what some of you have won tonight, some very nice programs, some very nice shows in there, a, an overnight stay at Borgata, just to name a few. And without Tommy pushing me, to the limit, to saying, you can do this, you can do this. Putting putting guest lists together, putting a flyer together. You see, I'm only one person and I can't do it all. Joining me as my next guest this evening is the executive director and the CEO of the other half of tonight's program, Faces for Autism, here to share all about what she's done over the last 20 years. And yes, you've heard stories from many of our faces, families, uh, Karen Adams, Mary uh, Kainz from Stockton, and Belinda Chester, just to name a few. Joining me tonight is the executive director of Faces for Autism. And I'm happy to be one of her assistants, Isabel Mosca. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Jacob, it's a pleasure. So Isabel, tell us how you got the idea to start Faces and all the good stuff that's come out of it over the last 20, 20 what, 21 years? 21 this, years. Will, this will be our 21st year, exactly. So we're very excited because we have had Field of Dreams right, right along with us growing and improving the community and giving opportunities to people all over the region and actually beyond. So knowing that that has been our trajectory has really lifted us up because we meet a lot of the same audiences. And, and that's, that's so powerful, knowing that we are able to meet people who change our lives. And my, my goodness, that's how I met you through South Jersey Field of Dreams. So yeah. Think about that, that's a long time ago. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah, it is because, because you, if I'm not mistaken, you came to us in the beginning and said, how can I help? And yes, yes, absolutely. And um, Faces for Autism came out of, um, and it's interesting because you and I were just earlier talking about my son, I have twins. They are the same age as Jacob. They went to school together and knowing that they are now 24 years old. When my children were two years old, my son was officially diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Knowing in the future what his life would be like was a big question mark. We had no idea because back then we didn't have access as much to the resources on the internet. We were not able to do things like this event uh, because we did not have the connections that we have now. It's so much more easy um, to, or easily accessible for families to find out things about autism. Now you can go on our group on Facebook and there are 2,000, 3,000 people who all share the same issue that they have a child whatever age who is diagnosed with autism and asking for help, it's instantaneous. Whereas before uh, there were no support groups, there were no organizations in our regional area in Atlantic and Cape May counties. So when my son was diagnosed, I went home and thought, okay, now what? So I bought books and I read things and I learned about things, learned about um, supplements that I could give to my son and different things. And it, and he improved and he did a lot better. I learned about therapies that would help. And I thought, wow, I'm starting to get a handle of this. And my daughter does not have autism, but we were able to understand what it was like to have twins 
who were the same age, different, um, you know, boy, girl twins, they developed differently, but I wanted to share information with somebody else who had a child on the autism spectrum. And I didn't know how to do that. So I put a flyer up in Wawa and after the prompting of the, uh, actually it was our assemblyman at the time, Frank Billy, he said, why don't you just start a group? Because we had spoken to a group from North Jersey that did a similar thing where they had a group that met together and they said, well, we've discovered there aren't enough people in Atlantic and Cape May counties to have a group. And I said, really? Oh, that's a shame. They don't have enough people with autism. So knowing so little about the statistics back then, I said, okay, let's start our own group. So we put up a flyer. I said, if I meet one other per person and we sit down and have a cup of coffee once a month, that would be great because we could share information with each other and share our strength. So when I put up the flyer, I had no idea that the press of Atlantic City had someone take the flyer and call me and said, can we interview you about autism? And I said, sure. We had not as yet told a large portion of our family that my son was diagnosed with autism at the time. So it, and our friends. So little did we know that the story about having a meeting of parents who have children with autism was going to be on the front page with the picture of our family. We had no idea because here I was a mom, newly diagnosed child, like a deer in headlights, not knowing what I was doing, taking step at a time, looking for another person to share my information with. And wow, next thing you know, 200 phone calls later, I found out that we had a few people on the autism spectrum in South Jersey. <laughs> wow. Wow. 200 phone yep. calls later. Yes. And one of the people who called me was Marianne Philippi, who is part of SPAN. And Marianne was so helpful. She came and helped me to set up the first meeting. Uh, she went out of her way. After that first meeting took place with all of these people, my husband gave me a small space in um, an office where he worked at the time. And we had to move to a courtroom that was across the hall because we didn't have enough room for all of the people. And I had worked in a hospital where I ran conferences and workshops and things. And I was used to doing that sort of thing, but not for autism. So when we got up and spoke, we found professionals and experts in the crowd who were willing to help us out to speak at meetings, to do different things. So I said, okay, well, I think we're going to have a support group. And not only once a month, where were we going to meet, but I also discovered that there were more services that we needed to set up, uh, activities and programs and connecting people to the services and the information that they needed. So the most amazing thing happened. We started a nonprofit organization something that I had never done in my life. I had run support groups and conferences and things, but I had never started a nonprofit. Lo and behold, there was a parent in the audience who was an accountant and was an expert in such things. Somebody else was an expert in starting a nonprofit organization. We all got together and they helped us to start this. And here we are 21 years later, knowing that every time I ask a question, there is a parent or a professional out there who can answer our question, who is willing to help. And more often than not, people help out of the kindness of their hearts because they have a loved one who is on the autism spectrum or they happen to be on the spectrum themselves. So knowing that you have that network that starts the ball rolling, it makes it easier for you to move forward and say, well, why don't we try a movie night? Why don't we rent out the movie theater and have a sensory friendly movie night? And we have done that many times. Let me see, why don't we have a special needs prom? Okay, let's find the people. Next thing you know, they show up. Why don't we do, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, picnic, we, we did a picnic in Cape May County too for 15 years. And it was an amazing experience. We've moved it since up to Atlantic County. So now we have an annual party and Jacob, you know all about this we have an event every year at our office building because someone else helped us to get the majorly discounted office space in Egg Harbor Township. So we use the entire building 
for a Halloween dance party every year. And Jacob is one of our DJs. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to connect. We also connect with the 21 Down group, uh, dealing with other community and sharing our strengths is what we're all about. So we welcome people who have children who are newly diagnosed throughout the lifespan. And that has been so powerful because we all learn from each other every day. We do things on Facebook. We do things on Instagram. We do things by email. People still to this day call me on a regular basis and say, because of the hospital, the hospitals and the doctor's offices having our number, they say, call this woman and she will tell you what the next step is. And to believe that I'm still doing this after 21 years, um, really, um, I think it's divinely placed that we are in the place where we are supposed to be at all times, knowing that we can help one another and people still help me every day. So I always give back. And I think that's important. We all need to be able to do that. So as a special needs parent, knowing that there are people out in the community, services and businesses who can help us, that has been key to our success, not only sponsoring, but helping us to do events and activities and move our community forward so that people are accepting of autism and not just aware, but accepting. And that's been key. And I know you feel the same way about South Jersey Field of Dreams. It's, it's just a wonderful experience to have community involvement and know that we have volunteers who genuinely care. Of course. And, you know, I, in my life, I've done, I have friends, you know, this market, that market, you know, entertainers, you name it, Ken Schaefer, radio stations. And I brought a few of them, a few in particular last year. I run an accessibility forum every year through the Methodist Church and I'm seeking they were gracious to have it on. So I brought a few of my friends from the panel down last year. They had asked me for years, can we see the field of dreams? Absolutely, I'll make time. Just let me know when you're coming, you know, I'll schedule it, there'll be people there. And you know, they were so inspired to give back that I walked them out to the field where the banners are where our gracious sponsors are. And it doesn't even, it doesn't even take five minutes for someone to say, I'm gonna give back. Yeah. And and it's it's so empowering for them. And it's empowering for us to know that our mission is not going unnoticed. It is something that people need to understand that we are all in this together. And if we can help one another, we lift everyone up. Yeah, and I've said it before, no one, if you ever feel alone, faith is, faith is has a support group. We're not all about autism anymore. I've seen questions posed on that site about, oh God, cerebral palsy, to food diets, to do you suggest one doctor versus the other, um, you know? Different types of therapies and, and also um, a third of people who are on the autism spectrum also experience um, seizure disorders. Right, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, seizures. I mean, you know that, Isabel, because Kyle's have gotten worse as the years have gone on. Right. And and we can share with each other. A lot of people will say, are you taking this medication? How is it working for you? And uh, obviously, no substitute for a, a physician's advice or a therapist's advice. But people share their experiences just as the same as somebody might be on Amazon checking out the reviews on a product. We are giving you real-time advice on what we are experiencing with our child or our adults. And I think that's very powerful nowadays because people uh, sometimes, especially now after having had the experiences of the pandemic um, and isolation, people have been separated for so long and we have to be extra careful when we are measuring 
our experiences out there in the community when you have somebody who has um, extra needs, knowing where you're going to be going. For instance, one of the things that I like to do um, is if my son, he, we take him out a few times a week. He loves to go for burgers. He loves to go for ice cream. He loves to go for pizza. And my secret, people are like, how can you do that? Isn't it, a, isn't it difficult? Don't you do this? And I say, well, it all depends on you find the places who are welcoming. The find the places who the as the servers who are more than willing to go out of their way to help you. Um, we have wonderful experiences at, at specific places. But the other trick I teach parents because they're like, how can we even go out? I can't take my kid out. He yells, he screams, he carries on. I say, figure out when the restaurant is slow and go then. Um, three o'clock is a wonderful time to go to a place that's open breakfast, lunch, and dinner because people are between lunch and dinner. You go then, you can get a booth. Um, that's my other favorite thing because my son likes to be cocooned in to a place and feel comfortable to settle in and then people don't hear him as much. And he's happy. He communicates with the server. He gets to know the server and they get to know him. And nobody is having a problem. Everybody is having a good time. There. One thing I say to people about anybody who is seen or perceived as different, maybe physically or emotionally or behaviorally, is that if you are working in a situation and you are, ex or you are exposed to somebody who is different than you are, they can smell your fear. And what I mean by that is, and, and I, Jacob, I'm guess, guessing that you might understand this, what I'm going to say is they, yeah. smell, they smell your feel, fear and they, became, they will behave accordingly. What they will do is they will act up <laughs> because oh yeah, this person yeah. is a little afraid to do. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show them a dose of my <laughs> behaviors. And, and if you're just standing there and go, hey, you know what? Have a seat and we'll get right to you. Let's see. What would you like first? Would you like a plate of fries before we get started? I'll bring that right over. And you got it. You won that person over. Um, and knowing that simply just to treat a person like a person is key. Yeah. Treating people like people and you know you know i will be i will be open and admit no one found covid easy if if i could sit here and say to you that that isolation was was the most fun thing that ever happened i i would be lying because because um it was not i Isabel probably broke down. I know I broke down a couple of times because you're alone. You can't see people. I thank God for Zoom because, uh, you know, I had meetings with my family, meetings with friends in other states. It's how I got a job by the grace of God. I started doing transition planning with schools. Thank God they were open to, to uh, virtual meetings because without that, I yep. would have, I would have nothing. And uh, I next question. I'll go back to the history of the first telephone you and I ever did, and that's part of the reason why I joined you guys on Faces. Uh, tell people the reason. I, of course, I know the reason behind it, but tell our viewing audience, tonight, you know. Not not just why we did it, but it, it was very successful. The first one we ever did, I was actually shocked by the amount of money that was raised. Yes, we did very well because we took advantage of the opportunity that our, our annual event that we do, Stand Up for Autism, was not able to take place that year. And what we ended up doing was turning it inward and saying, let's do a telethon. So knowing that, and I, I, I think I had a dream and I woke up and said, we're doing a telethon, Jacob, let's, let's do this. And um, thought, why can't we get people to perform? That people perform live on Facebook all of the time. Let's ask people. And knowing that Jacob is the intrepid person, fearless person that he is, he reached out and found all of these amazing entertainers who did clips for us, who did shout outs, 
who said, please donate to the cause. We had people from all over the world interviewed who came on live. Michelle Don Mooney hosted for us. And knowing that I was shaking in my boots that we were doing this, um, Michelle immediately calmed me down and said, we can do this. We haven't done it before, but we can do this. It's okay. I, I think having people like that who believe in us um, and continue to believe in us makes all of the difference. But the entertainers, oh my goodness, the interviews, the things that we came up with and knowing that you just, oh my goodness, took the bull by the horns and ran with it. We did raise, what was it over? It was $11,000, I believe. Yeah, $11,000 in year one. And what I what I find interesting, you know, you never know the people that are cross through your life, as they say, but like, like you see, I, I knew of Tommy, Tommy C, of course, and I thought, you know, I've never worked with the man. It's not, you know, hi, Tommy, it's nice to meet you over Zoom. But, you know, what's funny is, is we've worked with people over Zoom all this time, but you've never met them in person. And, you know, now I know Tommy very well. He's always been very good with me. Same thing with, to be said about Zach and Joey, but, but you never know who will cross, cross your life is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And they're all, they're all angels. We say we can be angels for each other. That's one of my favorite things to say. And that's what they have been for us. It's been great. Oh God. And yes, they have, as I said, without them tonight, but it's never gone on. Uh, if, Isabel, if someone was seeking to get involved with faces, what would you um, say to them? I would say to reach out, no matter what age your child is, a child to adult throughout the lifespan, the most important thing to do is visit our website. It's faces the number four autism.org. If you go there, um, you will find a lot of information that you can start with, or you can go to Facebook. We do have a group. You can go to our page, which is Faces the Number Four Autism, and look for the prompts to join the group. And it's a private group, so whatever you're saying, um, we we like to call it Vegas. What happens there stays there. Yes, what happens there stays there, and it's not going anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. I believe I have one more interview left to share with you tonight. But please continue to donate to these wonderful causes. They've done oodles for us over the last 20 years. And as, as, we, as I'm going to sing with Tommy and Zach and Joey and Billy Carlucci and everyone tonight that has pulled together for me, what the world needs now is love, sweet love.